He's Greg McElroy, the former Alabama quarterback, former Jets quarterback, part of uh, Feinbaum Film Room, Iron Bowl Live on Saturday, discussing the game, breaking down uh, the action with Paul Feinbaum and other analysts. And uh, Greg joins us now. Hi, Greg. How are you? Dan, been a long time, buddy. I hope you're good. McLovin, hope you're still not upset. If you want a Wonderlook rematch, we can do it again anytime. Wow. What was your What was your Wonderlook score? <laughs> Conflicting reports, but we'll go with the higher of the two, 48. <laughs> yeah, but a lot of PED rumors. Uh, maybe some Red Bull right before involved. <laughs> Little Diet Dr. Pepper does the body good, McLovin. You know that. I love the fact that the first caller was about Fordham football. What what was going on in your <laughs> mind, Greg, when you're here talking about the Iron or the uh, Iron Bowl live and somebody was talking about Fordham football? First thing that went through my mind was, okay, where is this going to go from here? Are we going to get a Baba Booey? Like, where, what, is, what possibly can go wrong taking live phone calls during the Iron Bowl? I mean, you understand, yes. man, how crazy it is during that game and how crazy that is for fans. And well, here's it was how actually I'm... relatively benign. I didn't think it was, it was not nearly as bad as I was expecting. All right, here's how it sounded. James in Dothan, Alabama, what's on your mind? Uh, yeah, I wanted to talk about Fordham football and uh, go Fordham, go Rams, go Bronx, New York. There you yeah, go. Yeah, obviously. Uh, what do you guys think about the Fordham, uh, Fordham Rams? I have no idea. Uh, Fordham. Putting it together. Putting it together. He was talking together. about a truck. <laughs> yeah, Ford Rams. I think he's talking about a, a Rams truck. There you go. That's and, and there, there was all uphill or downhill from there. Marcus uh, Spears legitimately thought that he was saying Ford and Ram truck. <laughs> he legitimately thought that. So it was a good time. I, of course, would have gone with Ram. Um, and so the, uh, the outcome with this Alabama game, um, the fact that they're scoring points, that it's just different, that Blake Sims was bad and Twitter was killing him, saying get him out of there in the first half, and then all of a sudden he came back. I, I don't know how good Alabama is. But from your eye, trained eye, and being a former uh, you know, member of Alabama's football team, what do you see? How good are they? I think they're pretty good. I mean, you look at it, is there really a great team, Dan? I mean, at this point in the season, there are flaws and concerns with every single team that is jockeying for that four-team playoff position. But Alabama's as safe a bet as any. If you look at it, Lane Kiffin, what he's been able to do, in regards to building confidence in, in Blake Sims and, and putting Amari Cooper in positions on the field that are incredibly difficult to double cover. It's been an absolutely phenomenal performance up to this point offensively, and sure, yes, he struggled mightily to the point where his backup was warming up on the sideline. It was, yeah. it was not something that you would have expected in Week 12 of the season, so uh, a little bit surprising, but he turned it on, and he got a little bit of momentum. He hit a long ball down the middle of the field to Amari Cooper, and then from that point on, he was rolling. So it's a real credit to Lane Kiffin. If you look at the game plan, he put things in early in the script and called things offensively in order to set up those long bomb touchdowns that resulted in the second half. So it was really a nice game plan by him and great adjustments at halftime by Nick Saban and his defensive staff as well. What would you do if you're Lane Kiffin? Stay at Alabama's offensive coordinator or... Shop around, see if you can be a head coach again. I think it all depends on what kind of opportunities are presented. I mean, obviously, Lane Kiffin is a high-profile candidate for a lot of different places. And do I think he'll be a head coach again very soon? Yes, I do. Honestly, from an offensive play-calling standpoint, it's been as good as I've seen anywhere in the country this year. Just from a formation standpoint, featuring players, Kind of the way he did with Marquise Lee at USC a few years ago yeah. where Marquise Lee had 100-plus catches and 1,700 yards. He's done the same thing with Amari Cooper. He's just very creative in tweaking the defense and, and getting the matchups that are more favorable to him. So uh, it's really impressive to see. I think he'll be a head coach very soon. Now, whether or not he wants to leave Alabama, he's not exactly high paid. I would expect a significant boost financially in the offseason if he does decide to stay in Tuscaloosa. But – if he were to go elsewhere, I would expect it to be a high-profile job once again. Could you see a scenario where Oregon is ranked over Alabama if uh, both win this weekend? I can, but frankly, it doesn't necessarily matter because when the committee is doing their rankings, Oregon, with the geographic advantage at the number one seed, would be going to Pasadena either way. Alabama would be going to the Sugar Bowl in New Orleans either way. So it doesn't necessarily change things. It just changes who the opponent is. And at that point, 
there's razor thin margins between all of the top six teams, so I don't think it necessarily matters. So uh, I could see it happening, but if Alabama's if it does happen, the sky is not falling for fans of the Crimson Tide. But they want to make sure that you have Alabama in SEC country and you want to have Oregon playing at the Rose Bowl, right? That is what the committee is going to intend to do. They are going to try to give the number one overall seed the geographic advantage. And in that particular case, if it was Florida State at the number one seed, they would go to the Sugar Bowl and Alabama would be going to to Pasadena. So they try their very best to give the number one seed the over, overwhelming advantage. But in this case, it doesn't necessarily matter between one and two, considering one is a Southeastern team, one is a West Coast team. Talking to Greg McElroy, the SEC Network, joining us, Dan Patrick Show. If I took away Jameis Winston's name off the field and you just looked at Florida State defending national champs undefeated again this year, if it was any other school in that scenario, would they be number one in the country? This is the first time in the history of college football, Dan, where the team that started the season number one has dropped in the polls, but they deserve to drop. Let's be honest. At this point, we have human element playing a factor in the end-all result. But is there human element in assessing Florida State and Jameis Winston the person? I don't think the human element really looks at what's going on off the field. That's not affecting how they view Florida State. What they're looking at is the fact that they have six games that were only one touchdown victories, five of which were against unranked opponents. And this team has been relatively flawed throughout the course of the year. They have yet to dominate an opponent. But why are they in the top four then, Greg? Because they're undefeated in a, so in a Power 5 conference. Well, and no matter what, that's going to automatically give them the benefit of the doubt in the eyes of the committee and the eyes of the average analyst. Is it really a Power 5 conference? <laughs> they were 4-0 and against the SEC East this week, so it's hard to look against what the... And honestly, I think the ACC is a little underrated, personally, Dan. I, okay. I, do I think they're one of the top two conferences? Absolutely not. But between the Big 12, the ACC, and the Big 10, you could make an argument for any one of the three being the third best conference behind the SEC and the Pac-12. Give me the upset this weekend. I think Georgia Tech's going to knock off Florida State. I really think that, that Georgia Tech will be able to control the line of scrimmage. They have an opportunistic defense, and Jameis Winston has been prone to throwing interceptions this year. I'm also concerned about that Arizona team knocking off Oregon, strictly because, frankly, I mean, Arizona played on Friday. They have yeah. seven days to prepare. Oregon played on Saturday. They have six. I mean, it does change, and those things do factor in ever so slightly. Do I think it's it's an overwhelming statistic? No, but Arizona has beaten the Oregon Ducks the last two times they've played, one of which was in Eugene on a Thursday night. So a lot of factors leaning heavily in favor of the Wildcats. They still don't have Marcus Mariota at quarterback, so I would still have to go with the Ducks winning that one. But Florida State could be in trouble this weekend if, if Jameis Winston continues to keep up his turnover ways. If they were stocks, you could invest in Marcus Mariota or Jameis Winston. Which stock would you invest in? Marcus Mariota. I think he's a better pro. I like his quick release. Now, I do get a little bit concerned with the comparisons that people are making about him being kind of the next RG3. Are they similar? Do they have the same skill set? Are they system-based players? Does that concern me? Absolutely. But I know that I wouldn't want to, at this point, invest in a quarterback that has regressed from year one to year two, and Jameis Winston has regressed. If you look at it accuracy-wise, he's not the same player. He hasn't gotten the ball out and hasn't been as careful with the football. Now, from a physical standpoint, he's an absolute machine. He's Ben Roethlisberger with his size and strength. Mm -hmm. He's absolutely unbelievable, but he has kind of a long wind-up, and I question his decision-making. Not to mention the off-the-field incidences definitely concern me as well. So I think Marcus Mariota is the best pro with the way a ball jumps out of his hands and the athleticism he can feature. Rex Ryan's next job will be? He's going to be a head coach. Now, whether that's in Oakland or wherever it may be, he's going to be a head coach. He deserves another chance, too. I really do. And honestly, I know that there's been speculation about him going into TV, and how good would that be, Dave? Yeah, Seriously. I agree. I think he would be great there. I, I just don't. I had heard the Falcons, if that job is open, uh, that he might be on the short list for that job. But I, I could see him, uh, you know, it, it, you could, the mothership could pick him up. 
and uh, and and slide him in there. I, I just it feels like he has maybe a year of TV in him, um, but I I don't know. That's just my gut. I think he'd be phenomenal. And his son, he's gonna, his son's going to be a junior at Clemson. Would he want to take the next couple years and maybe take a job that doesn't require so much preparation? So maybe go the television route? I don't know, but he'd make for wonderful television. I'm just really disappointed with the way things have gone in New York. I really am. I, I think the world of Rex Ryan, I think he's a tremendous coach, and I don't think John Idzik's given him the full – the full keys to the car. They're twenty million under the cap at the start of the season. He didn't give them the d- defensive backs and the corners that are so vital to Rex Ryan's system. Uh, and so I'm I'm disappointed that things didn't work out there. We'll see what happens. I would assume that he's probably not going to be the New York Jets head coach next year. But uh, very Vic, very disappointed with the way things have gone up there. But I don't think Vic's back. I don't think uh, the GM Idzik's back. Rex not back. Is Geno going to be back next year? I think it's tough to say. Uh, obviously, with the rookie contracts being what they are, you can cut ties with a rookie quarterback and not suffer tremendous consequences. So at this point, Geno Smith only being a second year or a uh, second round quarterback, I don't know what his cap hit will be, but it won't be significant whatsoever. They'll be able to cut ties with him if, in fact, they do want to do that uh, without pretty much paying any types of consequences whatsoever. Great to talk uh, to you again, Greg. Thanks for joining us, and good luck with the SEC Network. Always fun, guys. Uh, Tell your dad I said hello. Thank you, Greg. I will do it, Dan. Talk soon. All right, Greg McElroy, SEC Network uh, analyst, also working for SiriusXM.